the safety profile of the ESP block remains the biggest attraction for most practitioners. With good reason, because ultimately we all believe in the Hippocratic Oath. First, do no harm. And I've updated that to my personal motto for regional anesthesia, which I tell all of my trainees. Safety before efficacy, before efficiency. I'm less worried about a block that doesn't provide perfect analgesia, and I'm more worried about causing injury. The site of injection and needle placement is distant from major blood vessels, nerves, or important internal organs. Neural injury has never been described with an ESP block, and there's no reason to believe that this should ever occur. You can in good faith describe the ESP block as an injection into the muscles of the back rather than into the spine, and I find that patients are tremendously reassured when I tell them that we are, in fact, nowhere near their spinal cord. Surgeons are also less likely to object, at least on the grounds of patient safety. As a result, I think it's quite clear that this is a pretty safe block in patients who have coagulation abnormalities, as bleeding complications are very rare. The risk of a pneumothorax should also theoretically be zero, even if your needle tip localization is suboptimal, as the margin for error is so large. Hypotension has been reported in the literature, but this is comparatively rare and is really a function of how close you're depositing local anesthetic to the spinal nerve roots in the paravertebral space and epidural space, and thus how much of a sympathetic block you get. Which in turn is the trade-off for a block that works really well, and a block that's in effect a true paravertebral, even an epidural. The most likely adverse effect is a local anesthetic systemic toxicity or last event, but this is still rare and the severity of these events is usually minor. We now have recent studies that support the risk of plasma concentrations in the toxic range being minimal. In fact, the venous concentrations measured after a 2 mg per kilo dose of bupivacaine are several orders of magnitude below the toxic thresholds. Note that this was using a 1 in 200,000 or 5 mics per mil epinephrine containing solution of bupivacaine. I would always encourage the use of epinephrine containing local anesthetic solutions because as you see from this comparative study of plain and epinephrine containing levobupivacaine, the epinephrine significantly reduced maximum concentrations and plasma concentrations at all measured time points, and thus the risk of last as well. It does not seem to change the duration of analgesia, however. One note of caution, I have noticed in some patients that the epinephrine itself can sometimes cause tachycardia, tremors, or feelings of anxiety or being mildly unwell within the first 10 or 15 minutes after the block. This is somewhat similar to the flight or fight response that one feels after an abrupt shock with a physiological catecholamine surge. <laughs> 